Okay, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today we have some interesting updates from the folks at Maxon and it has to do with two major things. One of them has to do with their end user license agreement, which is having an update and this update implementation will be happening within the first few days of September. So just in case you're working with Maxon tools, they are sort of working across their licensing and this is now having multiple parts. So there is a licensor and also a license agreement for Cinema 4D, ZBrush, Redshift, and also Red Giant. And for those who like to read up on these one and actually see all of the things that is happening with it, they might want to consider taking a look at it. One major part which I think you may want to pay attention to is the object of agreement that deals with the licensor, the fact that the licensor is not responsible for maintaining the software unless otherwise, and also a couple of conversations that deals with the fact that you're being licensed a product to use for a specific time and you're not purchasing this except otherwise and there are several sections of licensing that has to do with perpetual license subscription license team named user license team floating license and a whole lot of other licensing things that goes on with it so just in case you'd like to find out more about the updates upgrades and limited maintenance modes then you might want to come through and see these ones for yourself so all of these including export controls and all that stuff is right here and an update and license agreement is coming and starting from september 2024 everyone will have to adjust to that and speaking about things that are coming if this reddit post is anything to go by starting september the 1st of 2024 maxon will be increasing prices for some of the products you're subscribed to and the changes include these so from maxon 1 to cinema 4d all the way to red giant redshift and zbrush and with this sneak peek here, it kind of looks like ZBrush for iPad will be shipping sometime within that time because, you know, whatever license you're paying for in terms of subscription, you should be able to use it across your desktop and also your iPad. And this brings us to talk about the pricing, which I think is very important. So sometime in 2019, the folks at Maxon, they switched from having Cinema 4D as a fully functional perpetual app. And you know, they did a few beta testing and now had the subscription. And since then, the subscription hasn't changed. And that pricing is changing for the first time in the past five years. Now, this doesn't justify the fact that the pricing should be changed, but the cost of things have actually gone up and there is an inflation calculator to actually prove that. Before we talk about the inflation calculator and how you can calculate if things have actually gone up indeed, Let's talk about Maxon's ZBrush. So ZBrush was purchased sometime in 2021. I kind of think December 2021, they did give a lot of people some leadway to actually purchase it within that time. And the price of ZBrush was increased sometime in 2022 from 895 all the way to 900. And in typical Maxon fashion, they decided to throw in that sweet old subscription into it. And that is how we find ourselves with having subscription. Same thing with Red Giant, same thing with Redshift, and also the whole package that they now offer. And by simply taking a look at this chart, you can see the prices have gone up. For example, ZBrush, which is being sold for $39 per month, all the way to $49. And this is a significant jump. I kind of think that across all of these, ZBrush is having a massive jump in terms of price percentage compared to every other one as it's having a massive 25.6 percent increase for the monthly subscription and a much lower percentage for the annual subscription which is at exactly 11.1 percent although for tools like cinema 4d everything seems a bit more stable as the percentage jump is about 16.0 percent for the monthly subscription and 16.7 percent for the annual subscription now for those who would like to see how this actually works and you know do the whole calculation it is pretty easy for you to do that so if you simply go over to the cpi inflator calculator which is something that you can use to check what the value of a dollar was some time ago versus what the value of that particular amount in dollar currently costs this calculator would help you do all of that so by simply punching in the values you can now tell that things are looking pretty interesting so for example for that of zbrush we can see that the pricing looks pretty interesting and we can also do that with that of cinema 4d and this sort of justifies a little bit why the price point is going up and down now some people would want to prefer you know just purchasing the product and owning that but this comes at a very heavy cost and with tools like these i think the way that the companies are looking at these are subscription based perpetual licensing are good they're very nice but more and more companies are now moving towards subscription where they can maintain the software and roll out tiny updates and you can use that software just when you want to use it 
especially if you have a dedicated project that you want to work with. And I know lots of people will prefer a perpetual license over subscription. That makes a lot of sense because, you know, with perpetual license, you own this software. You're not just paying for the license to use it for a while. And that is pretty interesting. One other thing to keep in mind is with perpetual licenses, you do get maximum of one year or two years updates and that's it. You no longer move further with that software. You're stuck in time with it. And I do have exactly the same experience with the Pixiologic ZBrush. For the most part, I do use the perpetual license that I already own. And if there is a new feature that I would like to use with the new version, that is when I do pay for maybe like a month subscription just to be able to take advantage of the new features that are now available in that one. And I get that reason why lots of people will prefer a perpetual license but perpetual licenses these days the prices are kind of high and then you're simply stuck with using the subscription but there is one particular category i think a lot of these companies are not paying attention to now the big problem exists here what if you want to lend this software because with what we have right here it looks like the whole concept of personal learning editions are now dying off. More and more companies are releasing softwares and they're just churning in on the whole subscription thing. And tons of them have actually put away with the whole idea of personal learning editions, except for tools like Houdini and Nuke, which is currently still offering a personal learning edition. Most of these other tools are now looking more and more into those tiny pennies that they can save up of students and also of indie creators or persons that just want to get started with learning how to use their tools. And giving 14 to 30 days trials honestly isn't enough for anyone who wants to really learn how to use a software. Owing to the fact that there is a whole lot of dynamics with the idea of learning how to use a software, you need to find the niche that the software actually caters to more, follow up with lots of tutorials online as people no longer read manuals. That alone just makes 14 to 30 days look like a tease for you to go ahead and purchase. There are lots of artists out there that just want to create with these tools and they need to learn how these tools work first before they venture into purchasing. So I'm just going to appeal to as many companies out there, bring back the personal learning edition. You can scale up the prices as much as you want, but try to be considerate to both the indie artists and those who just want to use your softwares and create amazing things. So this is it. Magzone might be increasing their pricing sometime in September of 2024. And these might just be due to the fact that there is an inflation and they want to meet up with quotas and requirements to pay staff. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you learned something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.